Well, guys, the day is finally here. We've been waiting on this one in the transfer portal for a while, and it's good news here for the Seminoles fans today and for the roster, program, team, all of the above. Florida State has landed a transfer linebacker and a good one at that from, well, nowhere else, right? Alabama. The pipeline continues to be really strong. And Sean Murphy commits to the good guys. Murphy is a 6'2", 6'2 2, 2 200 plus, 225 according to some places, kid uh, who was a four-star in the 2022 class when he signed with the Alabama Crimson Tide. He is originally from Manassas, Virginia. He doesn't have a transfer rating. This process went rather quickly, literally went into the portal on Sunday was in Tallahassee on Monday visiting FSU, and then boom, today he is committed. He's a Seminole and will likely enroll in classes very, very quickly. The speed at which FSU moved here is remarkable. Obviously, they did a really good job with this transfer, uh, with this pickup for a kid to go in the portal and then visit you the very next day. You obviously realize that the speed has to be very, very intentional. They did a good job of getting him to campus and on campus, closing the deal and getting him locked in. We have talked a lot about linebacker recruiting on this channel, on this show, on Twitter, in Discord, anywhere you can find me, maybe Facebook and Instagram. I kind of leave personal and, and don't complain about linebacker stuff over there too much, but just about anywhere else, we have certainly talked about the linebacker recruiting and how things need to change there. And you certainly did get a gift. I, I tweeted, my first tweet after Saban retired was, are there any linebackers in Tuscaloosa that want to climb? And we found one. Sean Murphy, a big, big pickup for the Seminoles today. We'll talk about Randy Shannon. We'll talk about recruiting here in just a moment. But let's talk a little bit about the player that Florida State is getting. Now, he hasn't had a ton of stats. He hasn't had a ton of action there in Tuscaloosa. Obviously, a very deep linebacker room. Was there for two seasons and now is transferring to Tallahassee. His high school eval, though, I do think is relevant. We'll talk about it really quickly from 247. Hardworking with inner drive, plays with a chip on his shoulder. Physical, menacing player in the box. Shows suddenness to get to the ball carrier. Plugs gaps with ferocity. Devastating hitter between the tackles. Does that remind you of anybody? At his best when playing downhill. Sits sifts through garbage at the line of scrimmage to locate the ball carrier shows stack and shed ability relentless in his pursuit physical superiority shows at high school level he's an excellent run blitzer if i had any kind of critiques if if 247 had any kind of critiques back when he was coming out of high school it was that he did need to move work on his movement his quickness his coverage skills you'd hope that that's improved a little bit from his time at alabama just kind of learning their system being in an sec program a really good defense in Alabama as well and we'll see kind of what we can get but does that profile remind you of anybody I, I think it's a DJ Lundy potentially with a little bit more athleticism hard hard hitter really good against the run great tackler maybe not the greatest in coverage maybe not somebody that you're going to want matched up against many tight ends although I don't know that you want many of your big time heavy hitting linebackers in a lot of coverage either I, I think Florida State intentionally plays more defensive backs a lot of the time to kind of counteract that but not necessarily somebody that's just going to be a shutdown coverage guy for you at linebacker. I think Florida State tries to kind of mix some things up so that, that those guys don't get left on islands. I don't even know that Lundy is a guy you certainly want in coverage a ton anymore. I think Tatum did a good job. Obviously, the big pick in the uh, ACC championship kind of comes to mind. But for all intent and purposes, a really good, solid player that Florida State can now hopefully go out and develop and make even better. He does a ton for your linebacker room. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about what it does for the defense in general in just a moment. But as you know, and we're going to continue to sound this horn, this is a commitment. And so we do have the battles in quarter zip on every single time. That's I feel like Alfred in the red jacket, you know, every time he uh, has something big going on at Florida State, he has the red jacket on anytime it's closing time. Remember, certain coaches used to put on a certain jacket. I don't know, whatever. I, maybe I'm overblowing it, but you should be supporting the battles in here. We have whined, and you guys have been every time, every commit we've had in the transfer portal. You guys have commented, well, what about the linebackers? What about this? What about that? Where, when is Randy? We got it. We got this one done. Florida State moved incredibly quickly here. Florida State did a really good job, and you're not landing former four star linebackers from Alabama within 
hours without a solid, solid NIL program. And it is the first of the year. We're beginning the year off strong. The transfer portal has been where Florida State has dominated. If you want to get involved, if you want more information, you can comment below, and I'm happy to reach out to you directly. Um, if you kind of know that the battle's end is something you should be supporting and you've been just kind of dragging your feet, Listen, Florida State finally landed a linebacker in the portal. Today is the day that you ought to go sign up and join thebattlesend.com. Transfer portal's been on fire. Florida State's done a really good job in it, and you should be supporting, if at all you're able, with our NIL efforts over there at thebattlesend.com. Now, we have talked a ton about what Randy Shannon and this linebacking recruiting needs to do and how it needs to get better. And hopefully, this is the start of something, uh, maybe a change at the way that linebacker recruiting happens in Tallahassee. This doesn't fix every complaint that we've had. This doesn't make up for the lack of recruiting that we've had at that position. But it is a nice step in the right direction. And I would be remiss to just give all of the credit to Randy Shannon and say that nobody else was involved. I'm very sure that Mike Norvell led the charge here. You can see that Mike Norvell was the one that greeted him when he got out of the car this morning, arriving at Florida State when Knowles 247 and the different places took the pictures of the visit. But... Randy deserves some credit here, too. You're not committing somewhere if you don't believe in the linebacker coach if you are a linebacker. I think that's pretty clear. I think Randy does a really good job of development. Randy does a good job of bringing guys along. And I think that Sean Murphy understands that. And I think that that is a plus and a positive. But shout out to Norvell. Shout out to Randy here. Shout out to Adam Fuller. A, a team effort to get this recruitment done and get it done quickly. This does a ton for the linebacker room. I think you have a pretty clear top two with DJ Lundy and Sean Murphy, but you've also got Justin Cryer and others in that room, young guys like Omar Graham, um, Blake Nicholson, and others who you can continue to develop and rely on and not have to throw into the fire to be one of your starters right away. I think that's probably the biggest thing, and that's probably the most helpful thing in this situation is that you're not having to throw somebody out there who isn't ready and give them more reps and snaps than you thought that they could likely handle. Murphy is probably the best linebacker on campus right now, and I know he just got there. Maybe that's a battle between him and Lundy, and maybe Lundy takes another big step forward this year. But I think Murphy's athleticism, his size, I think everything that he brings could elevate him to be a really, really good player. I think he could have a very good 2024 season and then a great 2025 season next year and really be a solid, solid top dog for you at that linebacker position. We'll see what the development looks like, but I think it helps your linebacker room a ton to not have to be so reliant on the young guys and hope that they're in a place where they are not a liability for you. As far as the defense in general, I think that this helps your defense tremendously because it doesn't show that the linebacking core is such a weakness. I think that's the biggest concern that a lot of people had. Secondary should be pretty good. Defensive line should be pretty good. But man, what about the linebackers? Are we going to be able to tackle anybody? What's that going to look like in the middle of the defense? Are we going to just play, you know, kind of a 4-1-6 back there with a ton of defensive backs and very little linebackers play everything against the pass? Hope that your safeties can come up and make hits probably don't have to worry about that as much. The linebacker room is going to fill out. And I think we all kind of understood that there would be a path toward it filling out, a, a path toward that room elevating and being better than like a worst case scenario. We just wanted to see how that would happen. Thank you, Nick Saban, for retiring and opening up these doors for Murphy to get into this kind of secondary portal window uh, with a coach leaving and, uh, you know, get shout out to Knowles for getting it done. The Alabama to Florida State pipeline is real. We talked about the South Carolina pipeline last year, and I know Alabama fans watch the channel like crazy because I see you guys' comments. They're hilarious. I, you know, I think that with the with the snub, um, and Alabama making it in the four seed as opposed to the one seed, like Alabama fans felt like our hatred towards ESPN was really directed towards them. And I never really cared about Alabama. I just think they kind of benefited from ESPN being, you know, idiots. Um, but I, there wasn't really a rivalry between Alabama and FSU as far as, you know, in my mind, any more than there was between FSU and Texas, who I think the Knowles should have been in in front of as well. So, but I know the Alabama fans watch the channel because. They were watching it when we were hating on ESPN and saying that Alabama got lucky and all this stuff. And then they continue to watch it with Norvell being rumored and 
Um, you know, Alabama really pursuing Mike Norvell pretty hard, according to Ross Dellinger and others that cover the sport nationally. I mean, Alabama fans like to say, oh, we, we, we didn't want Norvell at all. He was never offered, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, the, the, the folks that really cover this sport, Dellinger and others, uh, disagree with you as one of my lights goes out. But I know you guys are watching, and we appreciate Roy Dell Williams. We appreciate Terrence Ferguson. We appreciate Malik Benson. We appreciate Earl Little Jr., and we certainly appreciate Sean Murphy as well. I'm glad that we have upgraded our pipeline. I will very much take Alabama's roster over South Carolina's. There's a lot of people saying, oh, well, you're getting the scraps from Alabama's roster. You're getting the second and third stringers. I don't know if you've followed recruiting over the last few years, but Alabama's and Georgia's second and third stringers are better than just about everyone else's starters in the country if you look at the depth on both teams. So, yeah, that's I don't know that that's an insult. Yeah, those are still really good pickups. So shout out to Mike Norvell, shout out to Balzan, Randy Shannon, Adam Fuller, everybody that got this done really quickly. You got to think that Earl Little and others on this Florida State roster already that came from Alabama played a part here as well. So saying, hey, boys, let's let's keep some of this together. Let's go down and go compete in uh, in Tallahassee. Now, I really like the mindset of that. I like the way that they kind of view it. Like, hey, we've got a chance to go and compete and um, go out and win some stuff. I mean, they know what it looks like to make the playoff. They know what it looks like to uh, win a lot more than you lose Alabama, and they're picking a place where they think they can continue to do that. And that's pretty special. I think that's pretty telling about how they view this program. I also think that Mike Norvell basically telling Alabama, hey, I'm not interested in you, no thank you, is probably pretty big for the way that these transfers view uh, Florida State as a destination as well. So a lot of good stuff, a lot of good news today. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Appreciate you guys for being part of the channel. This is another one that we let our Patreon members and our Discord folks know about before it happened. If you haven't signed up for our Patreon, it's probably a good idea to do it. If you're, you know, 11, 12 minutes into watching this video, me ramble uh, about a, a pickup that we just got out of the portal, you should probably go over to patreon.com backslash DFNS, double fries, no slaw, and sign up today. You sign up for as little as $3. If you need help connecting your Discord account, shoot me a message uh, on there, and I'm happy to assist. Appreciate you guys for tuning in, being part of the channel. Fun day today. Let's go out and keep getting better. Appreciate you guys. Go Knowles.